Welcome to the Lake Forest Podcast, a podcast about the lovely city of Lake Forest, featuring topics like local news, sports, music, people, and food. My name is Pete, and I also live in Lake Forest. Hey, we got a sponsor for the show, Cha-Ching, Dakota Insurance Group. They've got your back. Why? Because that's what friends are for. Dakota Insurance handles all your residential and commercial insurance needs. Get a quote now at dakotainsurancegroup.com. I don't know who owns that company, guys. Any idea, Steve? School, we're, 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 we're missing you today. Okay. One of the things we like to do at the Lake Forest Podcast is give some small business love to our local businesses in Lake Forest. And we're joined today by Steve Whittington, CEO and founder of Life Working Coworking. And it's CRO, Jonathan Katz, who we worked together in a past lifetime. And I'm sure we'll <laughs> share some stories. Uh, let's find out what's going on at uh, Life Working, uh, Coworking. Steve, Jonathan, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. Well, it's it's early in the show, guys. Looks like we're starting to get back to uh, normal, huh? Yes. Whatever normal yeah. is. Yes, exactly. No, it 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 uh, it's it's interesting, right? Because our normal now is different what normal was before, and you know, arguably, that the first fact is this pandemic has just been a tragedy. Period. Right? You know, all of the, you know, the morphing, the pivoting, um, you know, that that business have been doing, right, have been incredible. Uh, but for us, on this side of the commute inside of the, of the trusted community bubble, that place where when the Xbox is taking your internet, when you're arguing with your spouse on whose meeting is more important, we actually are seeing you know, um, an uptake in business based on that. Got it. And wh when did you guys start, Steve? So we opened in October of 2016, uh, right here. We're on, the, we're on the corner of Westminster and Forest. Likely you have walked um, for a number of years under a sign that I paid a lot of money for that nobody ever, 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 ever says they see. Um, but we started well, back in 2016. Well, people like me and you, I mean, we bang our head on that sign. Yes, so exactly. There. <laughs> yes. No, you're on the second floor. I mean, that's a pretty sharp looking uh, place. Uh, what gave you the idea to uh, start it up? Yeah, so, so my history, I worked for Procter & Gamble for just over 20 years, and I was in the telecom space um, and really provisioning data centers all over the world. But a key piece that played here was enabling P&Gers to work from home. And that was in the late 90s, right? We were rolling the, the multiple internet points of presence, VPNs. So yeah. I personally, my wife and I, you know, we're both proctoids, as they called us. And, you know, I could coach soccer at 4.30 in the afternoon and I get on, you know, I get online with my laptop at 11 p.m. and I love life, right? So that was a freedom that we discovered in the late 90s. Fast forward, we moved as a family in 2014 to Chicagoland. And, um, you know, I was looking for what would come next. I wasn't going to work for a corporate for 20 years. And I started yeah. going to the coffee shops and cafes where you network. And that's something you didn't do in Cincinnati, but to do in Chicago. And, you know, I'm looking at food everywhere I'm having a conversation. And I'm a guy that yeah. does not need food everywhere I'm having a conversation. But what I am looking at to my left, yeah, to my left, I see three suits with portfolios falling off the table. I look to my right and I hear somebody talking likely with India, right? Because I can hear that conversation going yeah. on. And I'm sucking a latte looking over somebody's shoulder and this presentation says, if anybody but, but someone with your badge on is looking at it, you know, please escort them out of the room. So all that came together. Uh, I found this word co-working. I found competitors that thought you needed to be young, you needed to be tech enabled, and you needed to be downtown to do this. And, and the thought was, you know what, maybe this side of the commute with deeper pockets and time being really a focus, right? I can pivot quickly back. Um, maybe that is a, is a better idea in the space. So that's, that was the genesis of this. Got it. Now we'll take a little break uh, from life working. First of all, thank you for your service. You, you started out in the army, huh? 
I did. I did. I was right out of high school. I was uh, in, ended up being in Delta first, third cab in the ultimate oxymoron, Fort Bliss, uh, Texas, <laughs> but, but desert train. And I did do, um, I was actually too big to be inside a tank, but I did communications <laughs> there. And that was actually, yeah, they couldn't close, they couldn't close the hall. Um, but <laughs> they, they, sh they shot at you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that happened as well. Yes. But, but yes, I, that's that's where I started. I got a little bit of telecoms experience there, which which was the um, the genesis of what I did at the Ohio State University and got me into Procter and Gamble. That's right, the Ohio State. You uh, let's see, eighty seven. I want to say Rick Spielman, one of my boys. Uh, his his brother was Chris, who was a, a linebacker on the football team. Uh, oh yes, th those Maslin boys. Oh man. Well, to, yes, absolutely. And to be and to be honest, we, my wife and I, met in high school. Went to school in Jackson, Ohio, which is just adjacent to Maslin. Chris's wife, who has has, uh, has passed since, rest in peace, was, yeah. a, was a was a cheerleader at our school, and we got abused by Chris and the team and football all the time. So, so we did have a bit of a relationship there. We were there when Chris was there. Yes. At, oh at my God! Yeah. Yes. I mean, we're all over the place, but this is a great story. I mean, he, he was on the Wheaties boxes, oh, uh, he's, best, right? Well, he's a great, he's a great man. I mean, and, and what, what, what he and his wife did before she passed and what he's doing today is, yeah. is a great man. It happens to be an Ohio State alumni as well. Just happens to be. Just you know, I'm, try, I'm try, trying to suck up. No, he, uh, he put that book out. We brought him in to speak at a company uh, John and I used to uh, work at. Hell of a story. His brother Rick is, uh, he runs the Vikings. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, he does. Oh, I'm yeah. Not. He's G GM of the Vikings. Yeah. Rick and I played ball at uh, the Southern Illinois University. <laughs> awesome. And, when, and I played Chris, when Chris would come down to visit, that's how I got a taste of the, you know, the, the Massillon yes. uh, mindset. Absolutely. Of, of which I'm pointing at you, Steve. <laughs> okay. All right, so we got life working. You started, uh, you know, four or five years ago, and then, bam, punch in the mouth, COVID. Yes. How have you guys, quote, unquote, pivoted? What have you learned? Uh, give us your sob story of what, what happened. I'll take that one. I think, you know, obviously COVID, and as Steve said, is a complete disaster and tragedy throughout the world. Um, so I don't mean it always is the way it sounds, but it's also created quite an opportunity for businesses like ours. Um, you know, as we're coming out of COVID, yes, we have people that uh, no longer want to commute um, and they're coming in here to work. Yes, we have corporations that need uh, additional space uh, to do um, one time or, or, you know, things like trainings and things like that. But what we're seeing really on the enterprise side, I think, is really interesting. These big, large companies out there have some serious choices to make about what they're going to do. Um, I hate to use the word post-pandemic because I'm not even sure what that means. But as they yeah. choose to come back to it, what is the new normal? And um, I'll give you some examples of some of the conversations I've had. Um, sure. One is with Granger. Okay, so we started speaking with Granger. Um, quite frequently and their plan was to go back to work gradually but bring everybody in the office eventually and really go back to the life of the way it was pre-pandemic then you've got a company like johnson controls which has got a brand spanking new shiny headquarters in uh, milwaukee and they make the gra the drastic opposite decision to go fully remote sold their uh, brand new headquarters and through my conversations with other corporates in the area and around the country um there's a bit of a misconception out there, I think, that these are the two models and you have to choose between these two. And the workers don't want one and the company doesn't want the other. Well, that's not going to work. So what we've yeah. actually created and what I talk to them a lot about is models that fit their needs. There are all kinds of things we can do to facilitate the way you need to work now. You don't need to fit into those two boxes. So we talk to them a lot about what it is they need. And if you ask on the worker side, the workers, and there's been a lot of, and the hard thing for corporations right now is there's not a lot of data out there for the best way to do this. So what are they doing? They're serving their employees and their employees are telling them back, we want flexibility. That's different than remote. Most employees aren't saying, hey, I'm never leaving my house again, right? They want that camaraderie. They want to be back 
um, into the office, but they want flexibility. Um, and we can really offer that. You know, I think if you ask most of our members why they're members here or why they came, it was for our secure Wi-Fi and get away from the family and all these other things. But if you ask them why they stay, a lot of them will tell you it's the social aspect of it. It's actually communicating with other professionals that aren't my husband and wife or three-year-old kid, right? Um, they yeah. miss and they crave that interaction. We can provide that to them. Prior, they were provided that by their own company, but just because you don't work for the same company and you're at interacting in our space, you can fulfill that. So we're working on things where we can do, um, you know, uh, where you can work remote in your house some of the time, but we'll also have for your company, um, you know, maybe you've got 10 dedicated spots here. It's a rotation. It's a different 10. And then, hey, you want to do a training, you can scale up. This lowers risk for the company, right? That's a lot less real estate that they have to uh, own and manage. Um, it gives the employees what they want, higher productivity. So our message to enterprise is let's study what you need, not ask your people what they want. And let's formulate a model around you. And there's all kinds of different ways we can do this. We've got a network of other co-working facilities that are even international. So if you do have international needs, we can provide a customized curated um, experience uh, through technology. So uh, to answer the long answer to your, to your question is, COVID's really created an opportunity for everyone, not just co-working spaces, but corporations, workers themselves to work in a better way. So how do we facilitate that? And, and if I can jump on that, and actually I'm going to ask Michelle here in a second to talk a little bit about how we're, you know, we're communicating to, um, uh, you know, s some of our customers, our smaller businesses. But what's what's been very interesting in this, Pete, is, is again, uh, enterprise play, right? That's, that's relevant to here. We have teams from AbbVie, 30 people will come on site, right? Why would they come on site? They're only two linear miles away. Um, yeah. But we also have small businesses coming out of the pandemic that are, uh, maybe I made that choice because um, I was separated from my company. Maybe I made that choice because I no longer want to be in that job that is not the right job for me. And so I'm, I'm going to try to figure out what I need to do on, on my own. But how do I do that? Where do I go to get space? Where do I, how do I start a company? You know, that, those kinds of things. And that's actually, and, I, and we'll probably talk about it in a few minutes, but that's where we started seeing the opportunity to go vertical and say, well, what services do we need? But Michelle, maybe, maybe just a second on how we're talking to, you know, our, our local community here. Yeah, sure. So we're using a lot of, I'm mostly using social media platforms to communicate the message that there is this aspect of interpersonal connection, um, collaboration, work-life balance that is missing when you just take all of your work and take it home and keep it at home. That's really missing and that's what we're here to do. We're here to bring that option for you to separate that and to have the interpersonal connection that people have been really missing, which is why we're seeing so much more people interested in coming out of the house and coming in for in-person events and having that face-to-face -face interaction. So yeah, that's been really missing and we are connecting with them just by showing them the inconvenience that um, your home, working from home does have as well. Of course, you get, you don't have to travel far for work. You don't have to um, have that commute time. That might be convenient for some people, but then you miss out on so much. And I think that coming out of the home and seeing what you're missing, what we've been missing for quite a long time, almost two years now. Um, I think that's really important. Well, here, let me help you guys out and you can steal this. Uh, Jonathan, feel, feel free. <laughs> There's a lot, a lot of, a lot of leases are coming up right around town. And uh, you have uh, a new, a, a number of subscription options where somebody could, you know, one of the things is uh, getting people together uh, in a room, you know, and have a conference. But, you know, I don't want to ha have all the, you know, office space for for ten years. Uh, you have you have an you have an option there. Give give us an example of what somebody might want to do that says, you know, what I'm not going to renew my lease, but I am yeah. going to be part of LifeWork. So uh, I'll give you an example. Actually, you're you're absolutely right. I think when we were talking about small businesses, right? I'm I'm starting a business. I'm a startup. I can't sign a 10 year lease. <laughs> you know, that just doesn't make any business sense. We offer that option. But I'll give you an example of a, a member we have right now is an engineering firm that's about 60 people. Now, they have permanent space here uh, for four. 
usually. So four people come in here, work every day. Now, as they hire new people, that person will come in and do their training here with them for a week. He'll do all, um, you know, they can actually rent out our entire facility if they want the whole company to come and do a training or something like that. And, um, and basically gives them the ability to flex up and flex down and only pay for what you use, which is obviously right. very appealing. And again, think about this is right. I've got 150 square feet. I've got 60 people. Um, I didn't sign a lease. I make a commitment for 12 months. I don't worry about electricity. I don't worry about internet and it always works. I have free coffee right there. And when I need to flex up, it's on a per use basis, right? So that I can yeah. turn it back down. Then you can think about a, a nonprofit, right? Uh, Chocolate Chip Association, Karen Jones, Jones is a 30 year biochemist that's doing great things, um, K through 12 for uh, teaching STEAM to young women, uh, primarily in underserved communities, right? She was looking for how do I grow my company? I can't sign a five year lease. I don't have the, the resources for that. Um, here we are, life working, co working. She comes in three days a week, puts her little advertisement right on the corner talking about I'm chocolate chips. And she is now with an address she's able to go to Lake County Workforce and say, um, I would like to take advantage of an intern that, that you know, will be provided majority of the paid on behalf of, of my nonprofit. And, and here's where the real value is, Pete, um, just, just the dots that are connected. We are now, she's been here for nine months and she's got $10,000 worth of, of grants from corporates that have simply bumped into what she's done. She is now presented, hey, here's the program, here's how you can get involved, and she's got $10,000 worth of grants. That, you know, and, and, and what's really important to understand is if you're in economic development, and I'm sort of talking about how we were moving on, you look at us and say, hey, you've got three jobs, you're a pretty small business, right? Well, no, but in, inside of our envelope, we've got a 50 person engineering firm. Right. We've got remote office workers that are now engaged beyond just getting my work done. We've got some really important nonprofits, right, that are doing great things and they can do it because of the flexibility. That's that's a broad spectrum. Uh, and you can. The other thing that you can do is you can walk in the door right now and say, I want an address. And I want, you know, I, I, I um, my basement flooded, right? So I just need to use it. You walk right in and use this as well, right? So it's 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 like a gym. I use you for an hour a month. I use you every day of every month. And I should add to that, that one of the differences of the way we offer our service, we're very much the easy button approach, uh, whether it's for regular members, like we're not charging you for page printed or coffee or anything like that, which some people do out there. Um, also for events, you know, we don't have a food and beverage minimum. We have high end technology. Pete, you and I know the pain of having to do an offsite training or something like that in a hotel. Oh. Right. And no, I don't want to pay for all of that. Um, and no, I, I know you've got a projector from a decade ago and I got to do unions. Yeah, right. Well, well, um, we'll so it all for you. Yes. No, I mean, the packages that you have, I mean, from what I saw compared to a lease, I mean, why, I, why wouldn't more people yeah. do it? And we're yes. flexible with that. So, you know, you come in and, and really our membership options. So we've got dedicated offices. Obviously, those are a little different. The rest of them are based on usage, right? How yeah. many days a week do you think you're going to use this? We even have punch cards and, you, again, pay for what you use. And we're very flexible with you. you. Come in and you start using this more and more. We'll change yeah. that for well, you okay. based on your needs. And, again, to give another example, I love this one, is a Boutique Eye Banker. Um, a, yeah. a, a woman in a very small Boutique Eye Bank stopped her job on uh, April 29th started in a corner sit, sitting in a, an open space chair on May 1st designing um, uh, Italian scarves on an e-commerce play. Um, a year later, she migrated to one of our private offices because she needed a designer, got the designer for Lake Forest College, by the way. Also, shout out to Michelle Goldina, who um, went from intern to our marketing pro in you know, a matter of about three months. Uh, exactly. From Lake Forest College. And now, yeah, from Lake Forest College, exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and, and now um, the SEDA um, is a pop-up in Market Square. So we had to say goodbye to her, right, to the, to the uh, Italian scarf designer. But that was a wonderful thing for us, right? Um, yeah. But she migrated through membership, through needs, and we flexed up and down. Um, and then, you know, she's starting a business. And that's, and that's what we're all about. 
And I think to go off of that, um, something that makes us really special is that everything is very person personalized and very customized to your needs. We're basically here to take care of the mundane things so you can yes. focus on what's truly important, your business, your passion, whatever it is that you're doing. And I think that's, again, something very unique that you won't find in many other co-working spaces. Something that Steve says a lot, um, we're not co-working space, we're a co-working place where you come, you network, you meet, you work. And we are here to take care of, like I said, what you shouldn't have to think about too much. She's marketing, you can tell. Yeah, I like that. And, and the train's right there. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. You know, That's like, the, high, the idea is you can, it, it's a lot of walkability, right? Yeah, yeah. Come from Highland Park or wherever, right? Right. So, so guys, let's show some small business love. Uh, where do you guys go for lunch around here so we can uh, do some, some props out there? It's been a rough couple of years, Steve, like you yes. know. Absolutely. So let's call it out. Uh, left Bank, um, yep. food stuffs a lot. Um, we yeah. actually, we, we don't have a catering kitchen. So when a group comes in, um, um, Fresh Market, right? Yeah. Sunset Foods. Um, Ferentinos, um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Floppingtons, we make that long yeah, so <laughs> Yes, we will uh, we'll make that pilgrimage uh, every Bonk? couple of days. Yeah, really, uh, you know, as uh, a guy from uh, Highland Park that only went south to the city to work, north yeah. of me was a whole new world when I came here. And I come in every day, I'm like, oh my God, I tried this thing, it was great. Everyone was like, yeah, we've yeah. lived here forever. Yeah. Um, but good stuff around here. Your market house was a wonderful place to be, and we look forward yeah. to what's what's coming soon. Joe 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 King, uh, Lake, Lake Colonial. We're gonna we're gonna have yeah, him uh, that's gonna be awesome. on the show. Uh, right. No, this is great. I mean, it's mm -hmm. nice to see everybody getting back up on their feet. Um, what I miss, guys? Any other challenges you anticipate uh, in, in the coming year? I mean, you've so, been around a while. It's not like yeah. some people had started the beginning of uh, the pandemic. Yes. No, I, I, I think more. Um, I, I, it's less about challenges. What I would share is that in the next year, we will um, very likely be a multi-location um, presence in Lake County. Um, oh, we, nice. are, we are seeing, um, we are being pulled because of you know our community exposure, because the importance of small business growth in this um, uh, environment where we're moving from um, just filling in revenue gaps to business resiliency. So we're gonna show up at a, at a couple additional locations in the North Shore. We'll be announcing that soon. Um, what I will say that will give this away a little bit is um, strategically we're looking at malls and malls uh, are very, very interested in having this work component that can that can plug into the play and the uh, live component that they're doing. So, for instance, hypothetically, if you looked at a Hawthorne Mall, is looking yeah, at yeah. dropping Sears and putting up apartments and those kinds of things. So, we are being pulled in directions that um, we're going to we're, we're going to be starting our expansion. So, this time next year, we we are taking this on the road, and we're going to be much bigger than we are today. And also, oh, that, no. uh, uh, we're reinventing uh, some of our services as well. We've uh, created a strategic alliance with uh, Fresh Start Business Incubator. Um, so in all of our, this location here like Forest, but also all the new ones that will be popping up, we'll have our own incubator service for small businesses. Um, just a couple words about that. Um, you know, part of my job is to scale that um, you know, they've been around for quite a while, but how do we bring that regionally and then eventually nationally? Um, so creating, you know, we've created technology platforms from scratch to facilitate this. We've refined our platform, our um, processes. We've gotten new mentors involved. And what we offer that's a little unique to other incubators is we're very inclusive rather than exclusive. It's not just about being in your cohort and being in this exact stage of business and this exact technology. We want everybody in the community. Um, we want to help you grow. We want to help give you advice and we want to help you succeed. Um, that's from the application process, understanding the business itself, to developing it, to marketing it, to launching it, to funding it. Um, we will help you in all stages of that. Um, and it's been a really, really exciting endeavor. Yeah. And, and we started, we actually, um, 
we executed the strategic alliance in January. And, and just to be super clear, right? This is a community incubator where you have nonprofits, you have lifestyle companies, you have in some cases tech and non-tech growth companies. It's free, you know, and it's a formal process where you come in and it, and it, it, it you know, mentors that you might recognize uh, from the area, a uh, very similar to what's going on at Lake Forest High School, which you may be familiar, which we are yeah. a big supporter of, but um, th that we just formally launched this literally in the last couple of weeks. And so we're trying to get the word out to small, to, to, to um, small businesses, not only, hey, a very flexible place to come in and do your thing, but if you're looking yeah. at, uh, for help to do your thing, we now have something for you there as well. Oh, man. When you guys break that news, remember who started with you. Remember who started <laughs> with you. We sort of are breaking a lot of that news. Yeah, we will. We absolutely will. Okay. Now, you guys are at uh, 717 Forest Avenue, second floor. Look up at that pretty sign, right, guys? Absolutely. 847 457 2662. Yes, sir. Okay, subscriptions for every level of budget, isn't that absolutely. right? Absolutely, that's right. Absolutely, absolutely. And and I would just add to this: like you're, the message I would like to send to your audience: stop by, come check us out, come take a tour. Uh, we'll give you a free day if you want. Come check us out on how to how to work with us. I think once you see our facility, you'll you'll see yourself fitting in here quite nice. Absolutely. And if you want to have an absolutely fantastic Lake Forest, the Lake Forest podcast, we have the rooms for you. That's right. Oh, selling it. I love it. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm gonna I gotta come down there and uh, do do a live video sometime. That'd be awesome. Absolutely. When you, when you guys when you guys break that news, we'll do. Uh, Hey, hey, Steve, can you suggest somebody to come on the show that's uh, half as cool as you guys? <laughs> half as cool? Half as cool. Just half as cool. That's all I I'm looking actually, for. I would, no, I'd actually, I think Sarah Summers from DeSeda, I would have her come on. I, we have, I, I would, and, and trying to think as well. Um, you know, the guys from Bluffington's fantastic. Yeah. Now, that's not Lake Forest, that, that's 60044. So I, yeah, I will acknowledge they, that. They, they 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 do business in Lake Forest, right? Yes. Do a lot. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. All Absolutely. right. That's what I'm saying. We're trying to help out everybody here. Absolutely. Yeah. So all right, Bluffington, email me whoever that is. We'll I'll, you know, I'll I'll get on it. Well, guys, thanks for listening to the Lake Forest Podcast. Please give us five stars on Apple Podcasts and smash that like button on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Let us know what you like to hear about on the upcoming shows. Again, I'm Pete and can be reached at Lake Pete at lakeforestpodcast.com. Uh, the link will be in the podcast notes below, as well as the links to, uh, to Steve's uh, business, life working, co-working, uh, being a podcast notes below. On behalf of my co-host, Scoo Walker, who's not here, boo-hoo, Scoo. We thank, you, we thank you for listening. Cue the band. Thanks.